Trump done asked the leader of China to let Leangelo go. And y'all know I'm a big time Trump supporter. And my advice to Trump, y'all know this, my advice to Trump is stay the fuck out of this. When you dealing with Negroes, no active, no active kindness goes unpunished. No active kindness goes unpunished. Never. These niggas still gonna say, I guarantee you, these niggas still gonna say, oh, he only doing that because he wanna, he trying to, he only did that for his own personal reasons. He only doing that because, trust me, And he's more, I, I would have stayed out of it. If I was Trump, I, I, I'm telling you, if I was Trump, I would have stayed out of this. I'd have let them niggas languish over there in jail. They thieves. China Sports Insider can exclusively reveal that Leangelo Ball, Cody Riley, and Jalen Hill and the, UCA, the UCLA players detained for shoplifting in Hangzhou will be on a trip to China, on a trip to China, have been released and are currently on their way back to Los Angeles. See, this the thing about it, Trump. These niggas are still gonna talk shit to you. They still gonna say you're a racist. You only did that because, uh, uh, um, they thinking of a reason now. They, they ain't thought of it yet, because it's, it's gonna be hard for them to, to, to figure out how you was racist and all of this, trust me, they gonna come to find a way. Okay? They gonna find a way. Okay? And like I told you, that Angelo situation is on white folks. Laval's biracial and Mama Ball is white. This boy probably 20%, 18% black. That's on you white folks. The other two, we'll take it. That's on us. We'll take it. That's on Negroes. These Negroes went over there, made us look bad. But I can tell you one thing. These niggas ain't over there. These niggas ain't riding Lamborghinis this is to school. They ain't got brothers in the NBA. These niggas from the projects. Y'all white folk had a dude over there, a rich dude over there. I'm going to throw this on the pile with Brett R- 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 Ratner and Harvey Weinstein. This on the, Leangelo is going on the white pile. Uh, fuck that, all that one drop rule. That shit from slavery, man. That's a slavery rule, the one drop rule. So y'all can have more slaves. Y'all wouldn't have to take care of y'all kids. Y'all do know why the one drop rule was made. So white boys, white, white boys wouldn't have to take care of their kids. I want y'all to know that. The one drop rule was made so white so white slave masters wouldn't have to take care of their kids. Oh yeah, China's brutal prison. And it, look, let's just get into all of this. I did this in the video yesterday, but I don't mind doing it again. By now, many of us heard the Chinese Communist Party's promises to close its system of forced labor camps. This is where they were headed, to a forced labor camp. While I sincerely hope this comes to pass, the other forms of detention in China have not gone away, in particular the regime's notorious prison system. <coughs> remains notorious, the regime's notorious prison system remains a brutal and lawless as ever. I was an inmate of Chinese jails for seven years, and I have seen ex- and experienced what conditions are like. This what this what Donald Trump saved these two Negroes in this damn um, tenth of a Negro from. Two Negroes in a tenth of a Negro. Abuse in countries outside China have been reported because inspectors are allowed there. But never since the Communist Party came to power in 1949 has it allowed unfettered independent investigation of its vast detention system. I was detained in Beijing in Kuikikokichu Detention Center in 2005. So he said the UN, basically the UN couldn't come in there. Okay, here we go. 
The conditions in Chinese prisons are horrible. I saw them. Cells were between 7 and 21 meters. And between 6 and 16 inmates were crammed inside. Okay? This is like a two-man cell. You got 6 and 16 inmates crammed inside. We slept, ate, and defecated in these tiny rooms. The food was appalling, and not one day passed when we were not physically and psychologically tortured by the guards or hired inmates. Beatings, starvation, and forced labor are all parts of life for those stuck in Chinese prisons. Even minor complaints can result in punishment or d even death. For yourself or an inmate. <laughs> Some prisoners I knew tried to commit suicide because the conditions were so abusive. Only some succeeded. Those who didn't were punished severely. Guards would sometimes extract confessions from prisoners for the crimes they were accused of. They would break fingers, apply electric shocks, or if they did not want the injuries to show, would simply expose prisoners to freezing weather or force them into stress positions for hours. Okay, nigga, this ain't jail. I've been to jail here in the United States. Playing cards, plotting on each other, this group versus that group, gangs and shit, making um oodles and noodles, making gourmet dishes out of oodles and noodles and shit. Ask any nigga um, who just came home from jail how what? Oh man, just laid down for a little bit, you know, look, took a little vacation and shit, you know what I'm saying? Only time they niggas talk about, oh my God, the justice system. That's when they try and get something out you crackers, man. Any other time these niggas talk about, man, just lay down for, you know, for a few, you know, took a little vacay, you know what I'm saying? That's something slight, something slight. That's how they talk around each other. When they get around you crackers, the justice system, the unfair justice system. That's just to get a hug from you crackers, you idiot ass crackers. Guards would sometimes extract confessions. Okay, here we go. Embassies in Western countries heard about all this from me, but they did nothing to speak about speak out about it. Perhaps because they do they don't want to jeopardize their country's relation with China. Okay, so we must have good relations with China if Trump got these boys on a plane. Because they don't play that stuff in China. They don't play that stuff. Okay? When I was in the Beijing prison, organ theft was a known and sad fact for all inmates on death row. I spoke to a policeman who admitted to this. So what, he said, they're going to die anyway, so let the hospitals do what they want with the organs. I would never forget the time that an inmate recounted to me how he had just met a person from his hometown that was supposed to have already been executed and cremated. The person knew that because the family had received the ashes two years before. This made it clear to us all that many inmates were being kept alive simply so their organs could be matched with donors. Then the real execution, or rather tranquilization and organ extraction, which leads to death, would take place. A similar process has been used against prisoners of conscience, including some Uyghurs in 1990s. Okay, so we, there we go. All right. So not a friendly play. You ain't playing cards and playing dominoes and shit and writing letters and on the phone chopping it up with your girlfriend and shit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't in there bitching about um, the meatloaf and shit, ain't it? About your celly, your one celly and shit. But niggas don't be bitching like that anyway. That, that shit be some shit that niggas do for white folk. Anyway, niggas, niggas been in jail. Niggas, niggas, niggas love going to jail. They keep going back. Niggas love that shit. And that shit ain't that bad. Niggas be going back over and over and over again. Don't hurt the ones you love. So yeah, Trump really got Leangelo Ball back to the U.S. I'm telling you, Trump, you should have stayed out of this. I'd have let them niggas. Y'all lucky I went a president. Them niggas would have did the whole three years. They would have did three years if I was president. Because look, these little monkeys ain't going to learn. These niggas ain't gonna look at this nigga. Look at this nigga. 
This nigga's a thief. He's stealing cookies. That's a picture. This is footage of him stealing cookies from the facility. And a napkin. I used to do this. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I did that shit when I was in college. Used to, you ain't supposed to take no food out the cafeteria. You used to steal like shit out the cafeteria. I ain't gonna lie, but this nigga's a thief. And he a rich thief. That's the worst kind of thief. A motherfucker, a rich thief. Y'all talking about poverty make cry. The reason black people is crying is, is poverty. Poverty ain't got shit to do with crime. You either a good person or you not. It's, they, 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 if I was a poor person, I would be mad as shit, but I am poor. That's why I am mad. I'm mad as shit at you. Talking about some poverty make crime. There's no correlation. They done did so many studies. There's no correlation between poverty and crime. There's no correlation between poverty and crime, okay? None. And shout out to Wendell Brown. I, I got to keep telling you this story, but his brother, man, he been over there since, um, he been over there since um, last September, man. Some Chinese dudes jumped on him at a bar. He defended himself. This guy right here, Wendell Brown. Some Chinese boys jumped on him at a bar. He was over there. He was part of a show called um, Black in China. And it was a show. called. Um, and, he, and he was um, a coach for a Chinese. I didn't know they had a, a Chinese league over there. He, you know, he went to Ball State. He ended up playing in the Canadian Football League for some years. And he was over there coaching. He was on a show, this reality show called Black in China. And so he was at a bar one night. Some Chinese boys wanted him to drink with them. He would he wouldn't drink with them, so they jumped on him. And him being a um, NBA NFL line, NFL caliber linebacker, he um, you know handled that work something slight, you know, light work. I guess some Chinese dudes didn't know karate. He got them about the way they locked him up. He been in jail since September. Trump, why you ain't go get this brother out, Trump? This brother right here languishing in jail. This brother wasn't over there as a millionaire. His brother didn't have a brother in the NBA and a father with a um his own shoe company. His brother wasn't driving a damn um Lamborghini to class and stealing from four different stores on a damn trip overseas with his team. This brother was got a raw deal, Wendell Brown. And all y'all need to go to his um his um his um GoFundMe, man. Since Trump ain't gonna get him out, since Trump ain't worried about him, this is racist right here. If y'all wanna get on Trump, because I know y'all gonna say he racist for this, y'all gonna try to find a way to say he's still racist for cause y'all don't wanna give him no credit for nothing. Go get this brother out. Get this brother out, man. His GoFundMe. I'm gonna take you to his GoFundMe, man. It had 5,000 the other day. If I had my other channel up, thanks, Cake420, for getting my channel blocked down so I, niggas can't find out about this. Because if I had my other channel, I could tell more Negroes about this. But the most powerful woman in, in, in the black sector of YouTube, Cake420, that got my channel flagged down. Cause she, I, cause, cause, she, I, uh, I don't think Kanika, I don't think she should be trying to get a, a black man locked up for a crime that the police said was an accident. So she got mad at me and got a bunch of black people to flag my channel down. So now only like maybe a uh, fifty, a hundred people gonna find out about this brother, Wendell Brown, who's over there languishing in jail. You, uh, you already heard the conditions. Go to his, go to his GoFundMe, Wendell Brown. Go to his, go help bring Wendell Brown home. Help bring Wendell Brown home. Okay? They trying to get this brother home. He's an athlete. 
He black. Oh yeah, let's go to one drop rule. Yeah, y'all motherfuckers wanna keep talking about D'Angelo. D'Angelo is on you on white folk docket. That ain't us. That motherfucker, that motherfucker probably five percent black. That nigga ain't got any one of us. Now I take now look, I, I will I mean look, I'm not saying that that, that look. Look, fine. If he want to embrace his part of his heritage, but he going to take his other part, you ain't just going to be out here acting like an asshole and be, oh, I'm black. No, nigga, you mixed. Anytime a mixed person act like an asshole, they mixed. They want to come slum on the black. They want to be black and slum on black time. And then when they do, when they, when they, when they, when they, when they acting right, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm biracial. When they act like a jackass, I'm black. When they act like a jackass, I'm black. When they hit the lottery, I'm biracial. The one drop rule is a social and legal principle of racial classification that was historically prominent in the United States, asserting that any person with even one ancestor of sub-Saharan African ancestry one drop of black blood is considered black, Negro, in historical terms. This concept evolved over the course of the 19th century and became codified into law in the 20th century. It was associated with the principle of invisible blackness and is an example of hypodescendant, the automatic assignment of children of a mixed union between different socioeconomic or ethnic groups to the group of the lower status, okay? The automatic assignment of children of a mixed union between different socioeconomic or ethnic groups to the group with the lower status. The social and legal concept of the one drop rule does not exist outside of the United States. The social and legal concept of the one drop rule does not exist outside of the United States. The social and legal concept of the one drop rule does not exist outside of the United States. The social and legal <laughs> concept of the one drop rule does not exist outside of the United States. <laughs> okay? And it even says the one drop rule is defunct in the United States and was never codified into federal law. So you niggas, this is some shit you niggas is doing. He black! And they ain't black, that thief ain't black, that thief white. Claiming that damn thief. Desperate ass nigga. And he ain't even got good hair, that's the thing about it. it ain't good. You black women, I know you black women, huh? he got good hair, I can have a baby with good hair. Nah, you know the fuck you ain't. That nigga ain't got no good hair. Before and during the centuries, of slavery, people had interracial relationships both forced and voluntarily formed in the antebellum years. Free people of mixed race, free people of color, were considered legally white, even if individuals had up to one-eighth or one-quarter African ancestry, depending on the state. Many mixed race people were absorbed into the majority culture based simply on appearance, associations and carrying in out community responsibilities. These and community acceptance were the more important factors if a person's racial status were questioned, not his or her documented ancestry. Because of the social mobility of the antebellum society in frontier areas, many people did not have documentation about their ancestors. Based on DNA and historical evidence, Thomas Jefferson is widely believed to have fathered the six mixed race children of his slave Sally Hemming. Four survived to adulthood. Hemmings was three quarters white by ancestry and half sister Martha, half sister of Martha Wales Jefferson. Okay. Yada yada yada. Native Americans. You niggas think you Native Americans? I already did videos on that shit. You niggas ain't no fucking Native Americans. So this is about white, white. In, in, in native mix, okay. So yeah, that shit, that shit was some old slave shit. Well, 
Okay? Some old slave shit. Their children were born into slavery because of her status. As they were seven-eighths European in ancestry, they were legally white under Virginia law at the time. Jefferson allowed the two oldest to escape in 1822. So Jefferson allowed his, he, his children were slaves, but he allowed them to escape, okay? So this was a way where white dudes could fuck their slaves, have babies, and be like, shit, that ain't my kid, that nigga's, that nigga a slave. Put his ass on the plantation. That nigga's a slave. And uh, this thing about how fucked up these white dudes was, Back in the day, man. You have a child and let that motherfucker be a slave? At least Tom Jefferson would let two of his kids escape. But damn, you let your like you let your child be a slave. And I know like they was house niggas. Nigga, how many niggas you think was in the house? What if he had this nigga was fucking everybody on the plantation? He ain't having 85 niggas up in the house. Some of them niggas was on the plantation. He probably had two or three of them in the house. Like he got 89 niggas in the house because he was fucking everything on the plantation. Niggas is crazy. They was house niggas. Them niggas was on the plantation. And the mother, and, 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 and his wife hated them kids. The missus, the Miss Katie, and the Miss Katie of the, of the plantation, the Miss Kate 420 of the plantation, hated these motherfuckers. Okay? They used to do little secret shit to, to them and shit all the time to make their lives miserable. Like anybody would if, they, if, your, if your husband cheat on you and have a baby outside the relationship and them motherfucker in your face every day. Yeah, Leangelo, man, I'm sorry, Leangelo. You, you ain't, you, you, nigga, you, I know you ain't in damn shame. You ain't got good hair. Black girl can't even, can't even fuck with you, fuck with you and get a, get a, get, and, and get a good hair baby. Ain't that a bitch? You run around here stealing this shit, nigga. You 85% white, nigga. Oh, we don't want you. Goddamn thief. A rich thief. But yeah, Trump, stay out of this. These niggas still gonna be mad at you. Even though, and I ain't talking about for the answer, I'm talking about for the other two niggas. Them other two niggas, stay out of this. Look, here you go. Racist white supremacist Hitler Trump saved three black men from hard time in China. Shoplifting convictions are punished by three to ten years of jail. <laughs> yep. All prisons in China are hard labor regimes. So no playing cards, no sitting there plotting on niggas, forming gangs and shit. You know what I'm saying? Playing dominoes and shit, writing raps. Dog, I wrote my whole album in jail. Nah, nigga, none of that. Walking around, pimping and shit, tough and shit, fucking trans, fucking transsexuals and shit, none of that shit, nigga. None of that shit you niggas do. Got the transsexual washing your feet, giving you massages and shit, none of that. None of that, nigga. <coughs> Prisoners must work eight hours a day, six days a week. You have no contact with the outside, no mail, no radio, no TV. If you are good, you may be allowed one visitor a month. Only Mandarin is allowed, so no English for these guys. Okay? Can't speak English. During your off times, you are required to attend political ideology and thought reform sessions. Almost no one gets er gets early release. <laughs> Almost no one gets early release. They already calling you a racist, Trump. 
The Angelo Ball is Trump's responsibility, says Kenya Martin. Nick, the dude been over there for 15 minutes. Niggas is already, niggas ain't so done nothing to support Trump, ain't done nothing but make his presidency hell. Nothing but made his presidency one living hell with complaining and whining and protesting every damn thing. Oh yeah, but by the way, can you get this tenth of a nigga out for us? Cause he a tenth of a nigga. So you racist if you don't bring him home. Even though his daddy mixed and his mother white. But you still racist if you don't bring him home. You niggas are fucking crazy. You niggas are fucking crazy, okay? Oh my God, these niggas, Ben Simmons, I like Ben Simmons, but he's a fucking idiot. He wants justice for Meek Mill. What the fuck you mean justice for Meek Mill? The nigga was on probation. If he wasn't black, he, nigga, look, I love Meek Mill too, and I love their movement, TV Bay, all of them, but listen, do for self entertainment, all that shit. They a lot of that shit. The nigga, if he wasn't black, the safari beat down would have got them locked up. If he wasn't black, the French Montana beat down would have got them locked up. The only one he charged with is the one at the airport. Black people don't snitch. We don't cooperate with police. He got caught for that. If, if he wasn't black all the times he rode that bike illegally in the streets, which is probably every day, he'd have got locked up for that shit. Niggas don't tell. He lucky he black. He got to be on the streets that long. Free, free Meek Mill and Free Leangelo. These motherfuckers is crazy, man. You niggas want every, that's why your community the way it is. Y'all want all the criminals free. Y'all don't want nobody, there's no accountability for nothing. So when niggas come shoot up a motherfucking party willy nilly and, and, and hit four people and none of the people they was aiming at, and you niggas is sitting there crying with your candles and your teddy bears and shit, you know why? Because then why the fuck should a nigga care? Ain't no accountability for nothing. And a nigga gonna be saying free that nigga. So yeah, man, I'm gonna hear that shit. These crazy ass niggas. Free this one, free that one. Any nigga go to jail. Any nigga go to jail. Free that nigga. Look. Ah, motherfucker, look. Trump, stay the fuck out of this. Trump, you stay your ass the fuck out of this. These niggas is ungrateful. They the most ungrateful bunch of people on the planet. No act of kindness goes unpunished with these niggas. Look. Britton and McHenry, she said, wrote about this last week. President Trump, who was called a bum and white supremacist by the sports world, is now asking China for, for help to bring back three UCLA basketball players. Yep. You niggas, man. And that's all, and that the sad part about it is how cheap of a date you niggas is. If you niggas really hate this nigga, you know what I'm saying? You niggas is a cheap date. Even way you niggas is retarded. If y'all niggas jump on Donald Trump dick now cause of this shit, cause he freed a basketball player from shoplifting in China, y'all niggas is a cheap date. I would have more integrity, more more respect for you niggas if you did hate him. But I would still still would be ashamed. Y'all niggas is in a precarious box. Y'all niggas have put yourself in a weird box. Cause I would have more respect for y'all if y'all still hated him. Cause this is y'all a cheap date. If this is all y'all asking for, 
But then again, y'all just foul as shit if y'all keep hammering this man when this is what y'all asking for and he did it. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all niggas put yourselves in positions where it's just, ugh. Y'all niggas, man. I want to see what some black folks saying. Some of you Negroes is saying about this. It's mostly white folk talking about this. Which is amazing. I can't believe it's mostly white folk talking about this. Let me go to the latest. I know you niggas wake up late. It's fucking 10, 24. So you, a lot of you in the East Coast, a lot of you niggas just getting up. I was up all night listening to K420 and shit. I think he's just getting up. <laughs> I think he's up, up to 6 o'clock in the morning listening to how the fucking the janitor killed Kanika and stole her organs and sold her back up before anybody could find out. You niggas still sleep. You niggas ain't got up yet. I may do a video about this later when you niggas get out of bed. Man, why are you talking about black people like that? You niggas, as long as a fucking K420, the most powerful person in the black sector of YouTube, I'm, you niggas ain't getting no respect from me. Fuck all y'all. Peace.